Welcome to section six. In this section, we're going to talk about ANOVAs. Specifically, in this section, we're going to talk about the one-way ANOVA, both its theory and the assumptions. We're then going to go through an example of how to do a one-way ANOVA. After that, we're going to go through an example of how to do a post hoc test. And finally, we're going to graph the results of a one-way ANOVA by using an error bar chart. In this video, we're going to talk about the theory behind a one-way ANOVA, and we're also going to talk about its assumptions. Specifically, in this video, we're going to talk about the purpose of a one-way ANOVA. After we've done that, we're going to talk about the hypotheses for the ANOVA as well. From there, we'll talk about the theory and the formulas behind the one-way ANOVA, and then finally, we're going to talk about its assumptions. The purpose of a one-way ANOVA is to assess multiple groups and see if these groups differ on a continuous dependent variable. For example, we may have different drug treatments and we want to see if these different treatments differ on how they affect depression, for example. Now the idea is that we would have at least two groups, but we certainly can have three groups, five groups, as many groups as we'd like. But a minimum, you'd have to have two. And what we're ultimately going to do is we're going to determine if there are significant differences among two or more groups. In terms of hypotheses for a one-way ANOVA, as usual, there are two hypotheses. There's a null hypothesis, and that is basically stating that the means of the groups are going to be the same, that there are not going to be any differences among the groups. The research hypothesis, or the alternative hypothesis, is that the means of the groups are going to differ from each other. That is that these treatments actually differ from each other, so one treatment is definitely better than the others. In terms of what's going on behind the scenes when we're talking about a one-way ANOVA, here in this example, we've created three groups, three different teaching styles, and we want to see how they affect math scores. Notice that we have groups A, B, and C. We have five people in each one of these groups. Now, what we have here is we have a mean, mean score for each one of these different groups. And what the one-way ANOVA is going to do is it's going to tell us if these groups actually differ from each other. Now, ANOVA, the word ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. And so it's not really analysis of means, it's the analysis of variance. Now, what does that mean? Well, as it turns out, there's two different sources of variation. One source of variation is variation within groups. So that information we get from our standard deviation. And in fact, if we have this formula here, you can see that we've taken the standard deviation of each group, we can square it, and we multiply it by the degrees of freedom, or the number of cases in that group minus one. And then we add that up across all of the different groups. This is your variation within groups. Here, the information has been calculated out for you. So that's one source of variation, the variation that we have within groups. Let's talk about a second source of variation. The second source of variation is variation between groups. Now, notice what we're doing here is we're taking the mean of each individual group and we're subtracting it from the grand mean. We're squaring that and then we're multiplying it by the number of cases that we have in each group. And then we add all of that information together. And you can see that we've calculated that information here. Now, why is this important? Well, let's think about it for a second. If we're looking at two different sources of variation, one is, okay, we have a population, and within each population, we've created these different groups, and we wanna see what's the average amount of variation that we have in each one of the groups. We pull that information together. Now, a second so source of variation is, well, let's take a look at the means that we end up getting for these different groups. Well, if the treatment did not have an effect, we would expect those means to be fairly similar to each other. In fact, they really should be very similar to the amount of variation that we have within each group. So if we create a ratio of between groups variation to within groups variation, a ratio should have a value of one if there was really no difference. But let's say that there was an impact. Let's say that the treatment did work and there is a variation between the groups. Well, then that variation, the variation between groups should be very different from the variation within groups. And so we can compare that ratio to a value of one and see if we end up having a statistically significant result. Now we've calculated already the variation within groups and between groups. If we bring that information together to create that ratio, this is what we have. This is our formula for a one-way ANOVA. Notice what this is doing is it's taking the variation between the groups, then we're dividing it by the number of groups minus one, which is really our degrees of freedom. These are the variations that we had between groups. We're dividing it by degrees of freedom. That's going to give us our mean squared. Notice that within groups, we take the variation that we have, 
we then take the number of cases that we have in our data set minus the number of groups, which just gives us our degrees of freedom. We take the sums of squares and divide it by degrees of freedom. That's going to give us our mean squares. Then what we do is we take these two mean squares, we divide one by the other because now we have put everything on equal footing between the groups and within the groups, and that gives us our F statistic. If that F statistic ends up being a value of one or pretty close to it, we know that the groups did not differ from each other because there's no difference between between and within groups variation. If that F statistic ends up being significantly larger than one, as it happens to be in this case, then we can see that there are differences among those groups. Those means that we had previously seen are different from each other. Here's our significance level. Remember our significance level is always assessing the probability of the null hypothesis being true. And this is telling us that the probability of the null hypothesis being true is very small. It's less than 0.05. So therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that there are differences among the groups. And that's what we're seeing here. Okay, so basically what this is telling us is that there is a relationship between teaching styles and math scores and that the groups actually differ from each other. So at least one of these different uh, teaching styles does a better job than the others. So that's the general theory behind a one-way ANOVA. Let's talk about the assumptions of this test. There are some pretty basic assumptions for a one-way ANOVA. The first is that these different groups that we have, they're going to be compared on a continuous dependent variable. So our dependent variable has to be a continuous variable. We also have to have at least two groups, but we can have as many groups as we'd like. The second assumption is that our dependent variable is going to be normally distributed within each group. Again, this is the assumption of normality, and same assumption that we saw with an independent samples t-test. Again, ideally we would like our variables to be normally distributed within each group so that we have a symmetrical and unimodal distribution. If we have distributions that are either positively skewed or negatively skewed, that really doesn't impact us that much as long as we have a large enough sample size and again, basically about 30, at least 30 cases in each group. And we also want the distributions of these different groups to all be basically similar so they would all be positively skewed or all negatively skewed. What is problematic is if you have a bimodal distribution. So if you have a bimodal distribution, that's definitely not going to meet the assumption of normality. And again, in that case, you would like to do a different type of test. The third and final assumption of a one-way ANOVA is that the groups are going to have the, about the same amount of variation. So it's the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Again, same assumption that we had with the, an independent samples t-test. And as with an independent samples t-test, we use Levine's test. And again, basically what we're doing is we're looking at these standard deviations. We're squaring them. We want to see that's the amount of variation. And ideally, we'd like those to be the same. And here you can see Levine's statistic for a, a one-way ANOVA. And we see that we have a non-significant result, which again, if we look at the assumption of homogeneity of variance, the null hypothesis means that there is no difference in variation among the groups. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in variation among the groups. We see the significance level. The significance level in this particular example happens to be large, meaning that we cannot reject the null hypothesis, meaning that the variations that we had seen do not really differ from each other significantly. So again, that's the test of homogeneity of variance, same test that we had used with an independent samples t-test. So those are all the assumptions that we had for a one-way ANOVA. 